Tonight on Citrus TV News. Sessions has to go! Sessions has to go! Community members rally downtown for the resignation of Jeff Sessions. What changes do they want to see? Plus, hundreds more gathered downtown. We'll tell you what they were marching for. It's March, the month of spring, but it does not yet feel like it. I'll tell you what weather's on our way in my full forecast. Your campus news leader, Citrus TV, starts right now. This is Citrus TV News Live at 6, your campus news leader. Good evening, I'm Jamie Weiss. And I'm Elijah Shama. We begin tonight with community members rallying downtown against the Attorney General. Attorney General Jeff Sessions is stirring up controversy right here in Syracuse. Citrus TV reporter Chris Venson gives us a look at the modern free speech in action. Sessions has to go! Sessions has to go! This morning, 26 activists gathered in downtown Syracuse calling for Attorney General Jeff Sessions' resignation. It was 20 degrees outside, but it's unlikely a subarctic blizzard would deter Randy Wheat from making her displeasure with Sessions known. Jeff Sessions is one of the most flagrant, glaring obscenities in Trump's cabinet. Sessions has come under fire this week for inaccurately detailing his involvement with Russian officials during the 2016 election cycle. Under oath, Sessions claimed to have had no contact with the Russians. But earlier this week, the Washington Post reported he had, in fact, spoken to Russia's ambassador to the United States twice. It, it's unacceptable. I mean, it's unacceptable for any public officials to lie under oath, but particularly for the Attorney General of the United States. It's enough to conjure up memories of the past. This is at least as bad as what was going on in the 60s. Yeah. So she took to the streets to do something about it. I've decided that instead of sitting in my rocker chair, rocking chair, and knitting hats for my grandchildren, that my second chance to be an activist is here. We're looking at our First Amendment right in action. Chris Venzen, Citrus TV. Thank you, Chris. We'll continue to keep you updated on that story as it unfolds. The Vera House held its White Ribbon Campaign kickoff walk today. The 23rd annual event is held to end domestic violence and sexual violence. The rally walk from Clinton Square through Armory Square ended at the Syracuse Marriott Hotel. White ribbons were tied around trees and lampposts, and hundreds of community members took part in the event. The White Ribbon Campaign continues throughout the month of March. The Maxwell Dean sent out an email to students this morning addressing Trump's immigration order. Dean Van Slyke stated that the Maxwell School will remain dedicated to international engagement and continue their commitment to diversity and inclusion. Van Slyke stated that he had heard from many students and faculty and that the Athenian Oath outside the Maxwell Auditorium is still the unofficial statement of the school and should serve as a reminder that we are global citizens. The former Dean of the College of Engineering and Computer Sciences has been appointed to a new role. She is now the Assistant to the Vice Chancellor of Strategic Initiatives and Innovations. Laura Steinberg will follow ideas from the university's academic strategic plan to continue growing the entrepreneurship culture on campus. And speaking of entrepreneurship, Syracuse University is taking part in the Atlantic Coast Conference in Venture Prize Competition. Fifteen Division I athletic colleges across the country compete in a Shark Tank style competition. Senior Kate Beckman will be representing Syracuse with her national publication, Fresh U. Fresh U works with students at different universities to find college news and write relatable articles. The winner of the competition gets $15,000. And a Syracuse instructor at the School of Design has been named one of 10 finalists for the 2016 LAMP competition. LAMP aims to connect new people to lighting markets and create a broader audience to lighting design. Bacare Calcio became a finalist with his design for a lamp that represents the creation of the universe. The light shows the Big Bang with rods and angles expanding from the light bulb. The design is called Stellar. The Urban Video Project is presenting a program called Haunted Ethnography, a new experimental documentary. There will be a Q&A session after the screening with three emerging filmmakers. Anyone is welcome to attend on Thursday, March 9th from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. at the Hosner Auditorium at the Everson Museum of Art. The Urban Video Project is a public arts initiative of the Lightwork and the University. Today is the second day of the Central New York RV show, and 10,000 people are expected to check out more than 100 different models every day. As Nick Pabentonis explains, every dollar spent comes right back into the local economy. 
More technology all the time. Um, I'm finding uh, like uh, TVs are a lot nicer than they used to be. Bruce Raleigh has been camping for 40 years. He says he's happy with the bare bones trailer he owns, but make sure he's first in line to the CNY RV and camping show every year. Well, I like to see what the latest and greatest is and uh, more so for accessories, that type of thing now. Raleigh is among the tens of thousands who will walk through the show's doors this weekend. Potential buyers will see everything from the basic to the ultra luxurious, the most expensive, complete with high end furnishings, porches, and the latest tech. Buying an RV like this might be a hit to your wallet, but for the greater central New York economy, this industry provides a really big boost. There are more people out camping now than in 40 years, you know. The highest sales numbers in 40 years were last year's. Oot says that means millions of dollars pouring into the regional economy just from people buying campers and camping equipment. And when the money is good, the jobs follow. The Great Outdoors RV Superstore has gone from one store to three locations now. We used to just be in Fulton, New York. We've been able to open up East Syracuse, and this year we opened up Brewerton. Those stores will be busy after this weekend, shipping the hundreds of campers on display and filling custom orders placed during the show. So I hope to sell a little of everything, you know, from little fold-down campers on up to big fifth wheels and motorhomes. And one day, that sales pitch may hit even the most stubborn of customers. Who knows, another year, we may upgrade ourselves. Tickets to the show cost $10 for adults or are free if you're under 16. The show will end Sunday afternoon. We saw sharp changes in the weather this week, Elijah. Yeah, now that we're back with the snow and winter temperatures, David Edelstein is here to tell us our weekend forecast. David? Yes, the weekend is finally here. Today is Friday. Right now when you look outside, it's 22 degrees, but be careful. It feels like only one degree just above zero. It is March, the month of spring, but it definitely is feeling like winter. Our current temperatures right now across the board about 22 degrees. The outliers right now, Binghamton, 18 degrees, and Elmira down at 25. But looking again at what it feels like, the more accurate representation of what it will be like when you go outside, Really right above zero, six degrees in Rochester. That's the highest with Mile Myra. Binghamton is at negative two. And I'll tell you more about what this means for the next few days in the full forecast. Coming up next, who Jeff Sessions met with today following his press conference yesterday. And another email server issue, but not for Hillary Clinton this time. We'll tell you who when we come back. What are you, superheroes? Just four brothers who hate bullies and love this city. One thing you can never have sex without. It's not something you buy. Or something you take. In fact, there's only one way to get it. It has to be given to you, freely. It's consent. Because sex without it isn't sex. It's rape. Consent. If you don't get it, you don't get it. It's on us to stop sexual assault. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. Looking for these? You drive buzzed. It could be one very expensive ride. First, you gotta make bail. Then pay me to get your car back. Your insurance premiums will go through the roof. And my legal fees just keep adding up. All told, it could end up costing you $10,000. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. They said I have troll teeth. That my voice sounded like a possessed baby doll. That no one would ever love someone as stupid as me. That I was fat. Ugly. Disgusting. The effect of bullying is potent. We will no longer be the silent majority. Now, when you see online bullying, there's something you can do about it. We're gonna take action with the eye. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness, and so are you. You're watching Citrus TV News with Johnny Oliver, Jamie Weiss, and David Edelstein with weather. Citrus TV News continues now. 
Attorney General Jeff Sessions met with leaders of the NAACP today. Sessions requested the meeting after some civil rights groups were nervous that the Justice Department might soften its focus on protecting voter rights and monitoring police departments. This comes after Sessions suggested that the agency pursue fewer federal investigations of police departments because he thought too much involvement could cause police to become less effective. And reports show that Vice President Pence used a private email server when he was governor of Indiana to conduct official business. Private email servers are not as secure and not subject to the same open record laws as government emails. In 2016, his account was hacked during a phishing attack. This is the same scandal that Hillary Clinton was involved with leading up to the 2016 election. The Vice President commented on the matter today. I'm very confident that our email practices uh, were in full compliance with all of Indiana's laws. And, uh, uh, and, and in my service as vice president, we'll continue, we'll continue that practice. Juan Thompson has been arrested in New York City in connection with threats to eight Jewish community centers. The Anti-Defamation League's headquarters also received threats from Thompson two weeks ago. The threats included the name of his ex-girlfriend. He is expected in a Missouri court on Friday for charges including cyberstalking. And the Oklahoma-based Indian tribe Pawnee Nation has filed a lawsuit against several oil companies in its own tribal court system. The lawsuit comes in the aftermath of the state's largest record earthquake last year that damaged the tribe's historic buildings. The tribe alleges that wastewater injected into wells operated by oil companies triggered the quake in September. The case will be heard in the tribe's district court. From the Citrus TV Weather Center, this is SU's most accurate weather forecast. And now we're going to take a look at our weather radar. Today we saw a lot of snow coming through basically back and forth every other 15 minute period. We had snow and then it might have been sunny again. As you can tell on the radar, that's where all of these blue lines are coming from. They're moving out of the way, going towards Boston and the other spaces on the East Coast. But what we are going to experience over the next few days is a lot of cloud cover. Now, there is going to be sun within that time, but it will go back and forth. The storms again moving out of the way, but all the clouds you see wisping on the side. Now, as we take a look at tomorrow, when you wake up, it should be about nine degrees. Yes, that is single digits. We're dropping down there. Pretty much the coldest it's been so far this winter as we near the end of the season. It's going to be frigid and it could be uh, the sun coming out again in the afternoon. Tomorrow, the high is 16 degrees. The low, important, three degrees. We're getting down towards the negative, down towards zero. So be careful and make sure you bundle up with that weather. It will again be sunny on and off with clouds. Tomorrow, if you're going to be here at Syracuse for the game, at 9 a.m., 12 degrees, noon, 13. Game time at 4 p.m. will be 14 degrees, and then again at 13 at 6. Not much change. But now let's take a look over here at this graph. Tomorrow's temperatures compared to what it's going to feel like. Temperatures, they look much higher, but remember, the highest right there is almost 20 degrees. Only until 6 p.m. At 6 p.m., that's when it will finally get from feeling like negatives into feeling like above negatives. And really, only going up to about 7 degrees feeling, it's not going to feel that warm at all. And so taking a look at the five-day forecast, tomorrow, frigid, really windy, um, 16 degrees and 3. Sunday, it's going to get a little warmer at 31 degrees. And then on Monday, 50 degrees, Tuesday, 57, getting back to some of those warmer temperatures. And then on Wednesday, there's a chance of a morning shower of rain. Um, but besides that, the snow and the warmer temperatures are coming back. Well, David, I'm going to try to pretend that I didn't see single digits on the on the weather because I'm not looking forward to that. But like you said, tomorrow is game day. What are you going to say to all those people who plan to go outside before the game? Definitely wear a lot of Syracuse gear here in Syracuse. <laughs> we have a lot of warm things. Wear your hat. Keep your ears warm. Keep your hands warm. All of your appendages, you don't want to wind up getting frostbite. It is very possible tomorrow if you're outside for even just 20 minutes. So, David, uh, we kind of got used to a little bit of warmer temperature. When are we going to see that come back? Is it anytime soon? Yeah, we all are waiting for spring to come. We've had enough of these low temperatures. Right now, it's the coldest it's, it has been all winter. But as we get through mid next week, it will get back into the 50s. So we'll have that roller coaster ride again. It is going to get back to the 30 degrees and kind of stay there mm -hmm. for about a week. But as we get to the official start of spring at the end of March, that's when we should see our temperatures kind of steady out around 50. Awesome. Looking forward to it. Thank you so much, David. Thank you, David. Coming up, what major retailer is raising fees? We'll tell you how much you now have to pay. Plus, another statement from the Academy over the Oscars envelope mix-up. Citrus TV News will be right back.
They said a bottle was just a bottle. That no one would ever notice me. But I knew I could be more. That one day, I would make people smile. If you see news happening on campus, in Syracuse, or across the nation, call the Citrus TV Newsroom, 315-443-1177, or tweet at Citrus TV News, your campus news leader. Stocks were off to a mixed start on Wall Street today, with major indexes seeing a fall in early trading. This drop was ahead of a speech by Federal Reserve Chair Janet Yellen. Investors will be listening for any signs of a rise in interest rates later this month. Trades are also looking at the latest batch of quarterly results, and bond prices fell, as, long as, as well as the yield of 10-year Treasury note rose nearly 2.5%. And it's about to get a little more expensive for Costco shoppers. The retailer is raising its membership fees. Customers with the gold membership should expect a $5 increase, and those with the executive membership can be paying more than $10. The fee increase will take effect on June 1st, and this comes after the latest earnings report were lower than expected. And Mercedes is feeling the heat. The German automaker is recalling over 350,000 cars and SUVs in the U.S. after discovering that starter motors in the vehicle can overheat and cause fires. The recall covers certain C-Class, E-Class, and other models from 2015 through 2017. Car dealers will install a fuse to correct the problem, and owners will be notified this month and again in July when replacement parts are available. Harvard University is taking strides to address its previous ties to slavery. The school will host a conference with other universities with similar connections. Writer and social activist Tanisi Coates will speak along with other scholars who will present research related to the topic. Other schools like Georgetown and Columbia have also acknowledged their roles with slavery. The Film Academy president is reassuring Oscar members that despite the best picture mishap, the show is still something to be proud of. The Academy President Cheryl Boone Isaac says the Academy is most proud of how everyone handled the issue after La La Land was mistakenly named as Best Picture. In the email, she calls the show one of the best and says that the changes will be made to avoid a repeat of such problems in the future. Coming up in sports, the biggest game of the year for Syracuse basketball is on the horizon. Plus, the women's team faces an uphill battle in the ACC Tournament quarterfinals tonight. And it's a busy weekend for both the men's and women's lacrosse teams. All that and more. Stay with us. This is the story of a boy who didn't talk for a long time. The boy liked things to always be the same. Any changes would scare and upset him. The unknown was an unfriendly place. The boy was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where they couldn't get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. He wasn't trying to be mean, it just made him feel uncomfortable. Sometimes he would flap his arms again and again. One day, I found out I have something called autism. My family got me help. Slowly, I found my voice and learned all the ways I could live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at AutismSpeaks.org. Adventure can be found anywhere, but the best place to start is in the forest. I spy something beginning with S. Snow? No. Snow-covered trees? Nothing to do with snow. Head outside to discover incredible animals <laughs> and beautiful plants that come together to create an unforgettable adventure. Wow. So grab your loved ones. Don't even. And explore a world of possibilities. Come on, this way. Visit discovertheforest.org to find the closest forest or park to you. Well, Thomas, you've got prediabetes. But with more exercise and a change in diet, it can be reversed. I've tried exercising. It, it just makes me hungry for bacon. I love bacon, too. And who really likes to exercise? Not me. <laughs> me neither. Nobody. <laughs> 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 so we're good? What? Oh, you still have prediabetes. Big time. And now, 
your Citrus TV Sports Report. It's do or die time for Syracuse basketball. Good evening, I'm Paul Mancano. Tomorrow's game against Georgia Tech is the last of the regular season for the Orange. It's hard to understate the importance of this game. Coach Jim Beheim's squad sits squarely on the NCAA tournament bubble with just 17 wins. The good news is this game is in the Carrier Dome, where SE was 7-1 against ACC teams. But the bad news is the Yellow Jackets took the previous meetings between these two teams two weeks ago. Beheim and company aren't exactly concerned headed into tomorrow's game, but they know the pressure is on. You know, we're just focused on the next game. We're going to get ready to play, and we'll see what happens. I don't worry about that stuff. We, we're going to get ready to play. I mean, of course we're thinking about it, but it's not something we're trying to focus too much on. Every game is important. Every game is important. I want to go, and I want to win against Georgia Tech. We want that as a team, and we're going to correct some things and go move forward and um, try to go get a win. It's the final game in the Dome for Syracuse seniors and grad transfers. Tip-off between SU and GT is at 4 o'clock tomorrow. Well, Syracuse women's basketball continues its run through the ACC tournament. The six-seeded Orange rolled past North Carolina 83-64 in the second round last night. Tonight brings a quarterfinals matchup with the three-seed, Duke, and it's a tough draw for SU. The Blue Devils handed the Orange a 17-point loss in Durham a month ago. A win tonight and one tomorrow would put Coach Q's squad in the conference championship game for the second straight year. Tip between Syracuse and Duke is at 8 o'clock tonight. To the turf, where Syracuse men's lacrosse is looking to forget the heartbreak of last weekend with a win on Sunday. A last-second goal by Army last Saturday dropped Syracuse from 6th to 12th in the inside lacrosse poll. But Syracuse can climb back into the rankings with a win over number 11 Virginia Sunday. Coach John Desco knows his team needs to clean up some mistakes to avoid a second straight loss. You know, against Army, it had to do with the, the lack of possessions and the faceoffs. So hopefully, uh, we'll do a better job of that. And I think offensively, we need to be more patient. Uh, you know, we had some early turnovers, some early shots. Uh, it's not going to hurt us to get the ball around once and let everybody touch it and get comfortable at the offensive end of the field because we've been playing so much defense lately. I think we need to take better shots. I think we had some, you know, just quick shots. They were there. Uh, I think we could have had higher percentage shots if we worked for them a little bit longer. Meanwhile, the women's team has not one but two games this weekend, beginning tonight with a match against traditional powerhouse Northwestern. That game is underway from Headstead, New York. Right now, it's tied in the first quarter. The Orange come back to the Dome Sunday to take on Virginia. Postseason play for Syracuse women's ice hockey begins tonight. SU is in Buffalo to take on RIT in the College Hockey America Tournament quarterfinals. Winning the CHA tournament would put the Orange in the NCAA tourney for the first time in program history. With just 21 games remaining in the regular season, the crunch is going all in. Syracuse is in first place in the North Division and has made several win-now moves before Wednesday's NHL trade deadline. The crunch replaced 24-year-old goalie Adam Wilcox with 33-year-old Mike McKenna. Syracuse also acquired AHL's second-leading scorer Byron Fraze. The front office is hoping these moves add up to the team's first Calder Cup in franchise history. And tonight marks the first game for McKenna and Fraze as members of the Crunch. Syracuse continues its road swing against the Hershey Bears at 7 o'clock. Well, both New York NBA teams play tonight. First, the Knicks take on the 76ers a week after beating them in a thriller in the Garden. Carmelo Anthony hit the game winner in that one. A playoff run is not entirely out of the question for the Knickerbockers, but it's now or never. Meanwhile, the Nets are still reveling in win number 10 on the season. They take on the Utah Jazz at 9 o'clock tonight. So, Paul, if the Syracuse Orange wins against Georgia Tech this weekend, are we in the tournament? It's a hard case to make to keep them out of the tournament. At that point, they have 18 wins. They lock up a winning record in ACC play. If you do that, it's a pretty good bet you're going to make the tournament. But you never know. Last time, This time last year, we all thought they would be out of the tournament. We, we all saw what happened last year. Well, Paul, how are we going to win tomorrow? It's going to be tough. I mean, Syracuse had to come rely on a miraculous comeback just to be in the game against <laughs> Georgia Tech a couple weeks ago. This time it's in the Carrier Dome. They're 7-1 and one against ACC teams in the Dome. I like their odds against the Yellow Jackets. All right. Well, our fingers are all crossed. Thank you so much, Paul. Should be Thank a good game. Guys. Coming up, we'll have one last look at your weather when we come back. Stay with us.
Sunny today with light breezes, giving way to clouds in the afternoon. We could see some light precipitation to moderate precipitation later on, followed by powerful storm-like conditions. 90 miles per hour winds are expected. Authorities are asking everyone, stay indoors. Come on, that's it, let's go. You've messed up your son's haircut. Mom? Mm -hmm. Do you A, try to fix it? Like it never happened. B, work with what you've got. Or C, show solidarity. Thank you, baby. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Hey, look, it's those guys. Good to try. I'm fine. How many did you have? I should be fine. You should be. Go ahead and step out of the vehicle for me. See ya, buddy. Good luck. So it turns out, buzz driving and drunk driving, they're the same thing. And it costs around $10,000. So not worth it. Our David Edelstein is back. I want to talk about the wind today because I'm serious. I thought it was going to get blown over. Yeah, the wind is definitely here, especially when we're in Syracuse and this top of the mountain here. Um, we're going to experience a lot of wind, wind tunnels, especially around buildings. The thing is that as the temperatures have been changing so much, it was really warm, 70 degrees, breaking records at the end of February. And then we're back to these coldest temperatures that we've had all winter. The thing is that when you have those changes, that's where the wind comes from. It's the hot and cold air kind of fighting with each other. And as you have such large changes, you could have winds that go up to even 75 miles an hour like the other night. Uh, I want to touch on those uh, extreme temperature changes. We're going to be in the single digits tomorrow. How is this happening? Yeah, again, because the wind is coming in when due to all of the temperature changes, all of a sudden we're just dipping down. We have a lot of different storms that are coming in. We had an Alberta clipper storm which comes down from Canada a few weeks ago for, um, bringing in some temperatures. But then we also have storms coming from the Pacific side of the United States coming across the country and then hitting us. So it's all that accumulation plus the third type of storm, lake effect. So all of those, a combination of some of those, uh, that's what makes all these random temperature changes. All right, well, we'll definitely bundle up. Thank you so much. Coming up tonight on the Orange Television Network, Q's Countdown previews the Orange basketball team. And after that, at 7 p.m. is Syracuse Unpeeled. And at 7.30, Q's Countdown again. All this on Channel 14.1. That's all for Citrus TV News this evening. Check us out online at CitrusTV.com and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Citrus TV News. I'm Jamie Weiss. And I'm Elijah Shama. Have a great weekend. Thank you.